for that. It's um really really great to um, have discovered this summit. So thank you, Gertrude. It's uh, it's an amazing platform, and every day you learn something. You every day you get inspired by people, and Rudy inspired me tremendously. I, I love I love what you shared, and every other woman who's spoken here and Rick yesterday. One thing that I've realized we all have in common is that through the life that we lead, we keep having to find ourselves. You know, Rudy just shared that, finding yourself, still being in this path, still learning in this path. And that's something that I've realized that I've been going through as well. I'm a mother of four, a trailing spouse, you know, someone who follows her husband everywhere he, he moves to. We move every two to three years. And from that, I've transformed and reinvented myself so many times. I'm now a global speaker, an author, an anti-aging coach, a health and wellness practitioner. See, I realized that life has made me stronger and, and better because of all the challenges, because of all the difficulties that we had to go through you know, along the way. And it wasn't until I was writing my, my anthology <laughs> that uh, Gertrude was uh, um, you know, suggesting that I do. And I saw all the different stages in my life that actually influenced and triggered and provided me the tools that I needed to be able to you know, better myself. So I'd like to share with you my story. One of the most difficult challenges that I ever went through was when I was barely 12 years old. It was New Year's Eve. My father collapsed with an aneurysm and it was really good that it was New Year's Eve because we had their friends over, they were playing mahjong, and they just heard this big thud up, up in the second floor. My mom ran out, saw him down on the floor, saw him collapsed. They rushed him to the hospital. They found out that he had burst a blood vessel in his brain and they needed a surgeon fast to operate on him and stop the bleeding. The surgeon arrived. Luckily, he was really the best in, in the country, actually, and um, wouldn't have been something possible in any other day. Um, I guess because New Year's Eve, he was at home, that happened. So it was, it was a good omen for a family, but it was also the start of the most difficult life. And I think the most difficult time in my life. With, a, with, with four children, my mom struggled paying for the hospitalization, the care of my dad. Life was difficult at home. My dad went from not being able to move to now being you know, uh, really upset with what's happened to him, unable to do the things he used to do. He became very um, hot tempered. He was hurting us. He was you know, shouting at us. So it was, it was both emotional and physical torture. It wasn't that he was a mean person. It was just what had happened to him. He just couldn't, um, you know, understand why, why him, why him, why now? And that experience and that situation was so traumatic and so difficult. My mother had to make a decision and she sat us down and she said, look, it's either we keep your dad here and take care of him and, and take him to, for his treatments and you guys stop studying, or we send him away to his family in the US and you guys continue studying. So that was so difficult. I think my mother wanted to make sure that we understood what was going on, but to my very young mind, it was uh, you know, my answer and my understanding and whatever I was gonna say next was going to dictate whether or not I was gonna be giving my father away. Um, that wasn't obviously what was happening, but in my head, that was what I felt and that was what I understood. Because of that experience, I've always been afraid of not having enough. I've always been afraid of not being able to, you know, have that extra income just in case something happened. I didn't want to have to make a choice again between, you know, um, separating the family and being able to live comfortably. So at an early age, I, started building different businesses. I went into modeling. I, I went into TV, TV commercials, print ads. I sold products. Um, I helped an aunt sell her shampoo line when she launched her, her new line. And, and I did all these while studying. I remember being interviewed in a school paper and a local magazine. And I remember saying that my dream was to be able to set up a business that I could run from home. Because the other thing that we got deprived of without happening 
was we never really had my mom there to, you know, to cuddle us and to tell stories and to just, you know, be mom. She was mom and dad. She had to work hard. She had to provide for the family. And she was always exhausted at the end of the day. So I wasn't really blaming her, but I was missing that. And I didn't want that for my children. So despite the challenge, our family just kept getting stronger and stronger. The children uh, became more like myself, you know, uh, uh, I think we, we just knew how to, to make ends meet. We knew how to make the extra cash. I remember my brother selling guava in school. You know, he got the guava from the house and sold it in school. So just, just the little things to add and be able to help out at home. Another challenge came into my life um, when I was 22. I, I had a one-year-old that married early. I got married at 20, had my first child at 21. And at 22, pregnant, four months pregnant with my second child, my husband left me and he left me with nothing. And for someone to have promised herself that would never have nothing and be in that situation once again was really horrible. I couldn't believe that I allowed that to happen to myself. But as I said, your experiences, everything that you go through, your challenges, though you can't understand why it's happening when it's happening, it actually is what strengthens you and provides you the tools to be able to keep going on and reinventing yourself and just building yourself up. So I built a business. I baked cookies. I baked cakes. I sold them in school. I had my brother who was the youngest in the family still going to university selling it for me in his, in his school as well. I sourced materials for department stores and I sourced them from livelihood projects my other aunt had. So throughout all these, one thing was really amazing that I never really saw previous to, you know, having joined her story. I was surrounded by very strong women. My aunts, my mothers, they all had my back. They all kept me going. They all encouraged me and they all they helped me to just stay strong and keep going. Life wasn't always great. We had good times though. Every time a challenge was overcome, every time I've been able to get to the next level, I felt like, oh, just really good about myself and, and really good that I've been able to just still keep loving, still have a really positive mindset about life, losing loved ones, being left or, or in this case, deciding and agreeing that it was the best thing to actually have my father away from us. And then being left four months pregnant makes you wonder sometimes what kind of heart I have because I never really thought I would never love again. I never really thought I would never trust again. And some people think that's stupid, but I think it's just because I've never allowed these things to make me worse. I always wanted each situation to make me better. In 2000, I married a wonderful Australian man. He was an expatriate in the Philippines. He loved my children, my children loved him. Life was really going well until we had to relocate very quickly and untimely uh, to Canberra. And waking up one morning with frost on the glass of our car and, and just this really cold weather was very difficult. I couldn't understand it. I grew up like a princess sort of. Well, despite all the challenges, we always had help. In the Philippines, that was the norm. You know, we had help. We had staff. And I was doing everything in Canberra. Not only did I lose my family support and my friends and was in a totally new place, but I now had to understand the new culture, the, the, the climate, everything. And the language. I grew up speaking English, but Aussie English is just so different. You know, I remember going to the shops and saying, oh, I need a diaper. And they go, what? I said, a diaper? And they go, oh, a nappy. <laughs> and another incident was when I was looking for a pacifier. And I kept saying, I need a pacifier. And they go, oh, you mean a dummy? And I was telling my husband, why would they call a pacifier a dummy? But I mean, all those things, though they seem so petty, is actually so difficult when everything around you just changes so fast. And I think all those changes, all the trauma, although there was a lot of good times included in that, got me really sick. I fell pregnant in about a couple of years. And in that time that I was pregnant, I also had excruciating pain. It felt like I was being stabbed. 
And a diagnosis eventually came, although it was difficult because they couldn't do proper testing while I was pregnant, but I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I was told by my doctor that I would have to be on steroids for the rest of my life. And I didn't want to go on steroids. I thought this is my first chance to actually raise my child right, breastfeed for you know however long I wanted. I didn't have to go back to work. My husband was kind enough to say, you know what, you do whatever you want. You work, you don't work. I'm fine with that. And now there's this guy telling me I can't do that. I now have to go on steroids and decide whether or not I want to feed my child with the steroids in my body. And I didn't want to do that. And I said, again, another challenge, another thing that's stopping me from becoming or doing what I want. And I decided to take that challenge on and, and find a solution and, and use it to better me and better my situation. I researched Crohn's disease. I read the books. I went to herbalists, naturopaths, and iridologists. I changed my diet. I went into what they call an elemental diet, which was six weeks of liquid. It was that difficult. But when I got back to my doctor, I was in remission. And I asked him why he never suggested that to me. Because when I got, when he found out what I did, he said, I can't believe you did that. It's actually in the medical journals. And when I said, why didn't you recommend it? He said, because no one ever does it. No one ever completes it. And I took that as a sign for me to keep going onto this path and use this to keep myself and my family healthy, but also to be able to change the lives of other people, give them the option for a natural means of getting better. Make them realize that although you're given this diagnosis, this is what they say you've got and this is all you can do. It really isn't the case. The body's much better than that. The body's stronger than that. It rebuilds itself. Like me, my body knows how to reinvent itself. So we've been moving, as I said, every two to three years, we've lived in eight different homes, six different countries. And life hasn't always been easy. Moving is so difficult. Uprooting the children, taking them out of school, putting them in the next school, you know, learning the culture, learning the language, all that is difficult. But remembering that I've been put in this because now I'm stronger and able to do better. And now I get the opportunity to actually change the lives of people, not just where I live, but in all these different countries where I am now moving to and living, actually got me really excited. I'm so thankful that I've got the strong women in my life. I'm so thankful I had the challenges, though at the time, I couldn't be thankful for the challenges. But challenges in your life are what actually makes you stronger and prepares you for the next step and the next step to build you and make you the person that you are now or make you the person that you're meant to be for the future. So I now, because of all this, have been able to talk to people globally. I've traveled in so many different places till COVID happened, but thank you for platforms like this. I'm still able to do that. To be able to teach people that, you know what, your body can do more than what you think it can. It can rebuild itself, it can reinvent itself, but you also have to understand and believe that and allow yourself to reinvent yourself in the process. Make yourself better, allow yourself to be better. Take on everything that's going on. Believe that you can do it. Trust in yourself. Trust that you've been given all the tools and you've accumulated all the tools to actually get through this. You know, surround yourself with strong people that will encourage you. You will always have people that will tell you you can't do it. So be clear with your vision in your head and be clear and believe that you can get through anything that's put in front of you. Work hard. Once you've got a vision in mind, Get it happening, get it doing. Because once you work on it slowly, you start questioning whether or not you're actually going to get to your end goal. And lastly, have faith in God. He's got your back. You survived. You had a one in 250 million chance of surviving. 250 million sperms is what they say comes out of your father and has to find its way to the end. That happened so that you can come live in this earth. So you weren't a fluke. Everything that's happening around you is there to equip you. So you've got it. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Gertrude. And um, again, you want help in rebuilding yourself, reinventing yourself, get in touch with me. Let's do it together. <laughs> know that you can reinvent you.